Naomi goes back now with Ruth mm -hmm. and they see her mm -hmm. and the women start saying, oh, that's Naomi. Mm -hmm. And she tells them, mm -hmm. do not call me Naomi. Call, call me Mara, Mara because mm -hmm. God dealt with me and very or unjustly. Mm -hmm. It's like she's now preempting her pains and her bitterness. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending with wherever you're watching us from, it is always such a blessing and such a delight to come to your screen so that we can have conversations that can build us up, that can motivate us and inspire us to grow and just to become everything that God wants us to be. And therefore, it's another date that we have. I hope you have called your girlfriend, you have called that sister, you have called that friend of yours, just to tune in and listen in to what God has in store for us. And we have been on a series uh, looking at the portrait of Naomi. We began in our last show. And therefore, uh, tonight, we just want to pick up from where we left. And we are, looking, we are going to look at the different aspects and the different lessons that we can draw from this incredible woman that we are looking at, Naomi. We know many sermons have been drawn out of the book of Ruth. And focus, very little focus have been given to Naomi as a character because we learn about Naomi just until when she loses uh, the sons and when Ruth decides to follow her and uh, she commits to her that no matter what, I am going to be with you, that your God will be my God, that your people will be my people. And we shift focus from Naomi from that point and we shift it to Ruth. But we just really want to dwell on this woman and see the position of womanhood in the society, in the family setup, and the wisdom that we can draw from this woman that is such just a wealth of wisdom. And therefore, Karibuni Sana, I look forward to learning together with you. This, I can tell you that this show ministers to me just as, as much as it ministers to you. And with me tonight, of course, ah, this show cannot be, <laughs> this show cannot be this, the same way without this incredible woman of God, Pastor Miriam Karibusana. This show cannot be complete without our host, Helen Wangoi <laughs> and um, thank you for having me again. Mm. It's just a great pleasure to always come here and learn. Just like you said, we are learning. Yes. Some of the things we speak them, we speak here. Mm -hmm. When you get to look and listen, mm. you're like, oh, where did this one come from? Yes. Because this is not our doing. It is the doing of the Lord. Yes. And uh, as we, those of us who do theology, when it comes to the to the interpretation of Scripture, mm. we say there is progressive revelation. True. By the Holy Spirit, True. where He opens Scripture for you yes. to see it as He would want it to be, mm. and being bring relevance yes and that has been one of my prayers mm. every time i am reading scriptures mm. depending on what this scripture is supposed to minister to i always pray for the progressive revelation mm. that it can be relevant to people in different settings yes. at different times yes. at different stages of life yes yes wow Incredible. Mm. Mm. And uh, as uh, we have been journeying and uh, studying the book of Ruth mm -hmm. and looking at uh, two very incredible women that we, 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 we dissected Ruth and now we are uh, with Naomi. Incre it's interesting how uh, Naomi being the older woman, uh, it's just like by default, we just switch to Ruth and then come back to, <laughs> to Naomi. Mm. But we thank God that we are able to do this. Yeah. 
and i just want to read uh, a snippet just to, to 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 lay it as a foundation of what we are going to talk about today because yeah. we want to focus on the family aspect today and the role of the woman in situations where wisdom is needed uh sometimes we find ourselves in situation and especially i'm talking now to uh, those that are in marriage relationships and as much as we have the word of god tells us to submit also the word of god does not call us to foolishness yeah it calls us to be wise and uh, we have even seen uh, stories in the bible where we had men who spoke foolishly in the presence of a king and a woman had to come in to salvage the situation by just bowing down to the king and pleading for the sake of the husband and just uh, uh, pleading with the king that my husband is he, foolish he just is, has as his name means exactly mm. and sometimes you don't step up as a wife or you don't step up as a woman in a relationship in defiance you step up with wisdom to protect mm -hmm. and to shield mm -hmm. the man that yeah. god has given you mm -hmm. because when you shield him that means you cover him with the glory of god so you don't expose the foolishness so we are we, to, to, tonight we are going to talk about that aspect of the woman raising up in wisdom to be able to cover the homes and to cover the family uh, uh, with respect and in submission, mm -hmm. but to cover the family so that we don't also we don't go blindly and fall into a ditch just because you are supposed to say yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So let me allow me to read this. This is um, I love this Bible. It's a nice one. <laughs> you now know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just love this because yeah. it is so rich, yeah. and uh, it, it gives a, it gives you before you start studying the book, it gives you some details about and guidance about how you can study this book and in different lights that you can pick different little details from the study of the same. Yeah. So um, uh, this is the. They say this is the purpose of, uh, the, book of Ruth. of the book of Ruth. Yes. So allow me to read this. It's a bit, uh, a, not very long, but uh, quite uh, some reading. So almost every commentator observes the book of Ruth as a study in the sovereignty of God, emphasizing the sustaining mercy of of God, mm -hmm. which brings a fruitful end mm -hmm. to a story that begins with famine, death, and loss. Unfortunately, such observations are often made on the basis of the recurrent laments of Naomi. Mm -hmm. That is what most of us remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, call me Mara. Oh, God has forsaken. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of branded Naomi as the lamentator, mm -hmm. the complainer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the, uh, I, I go back. Such observations are often made on the basis of the recurrent laments of Naomi as she proposes that the hand of the Lord or having, has, has the hand of the Lord has left her. Mm -hmm. Or the her God has forsaken her. Mm -hmm. That is the picture that has been painted. Twice in her lamentation, Naomi uses the name the Almighty with reference to not necessarily to presume that Naomi's viewpoint is meant to be understood, but that she is emphasizing his, his irresistible might and mm -hmm. sovereign power mm. against her. Mm -hmm. However, it is not necessary to presume that Naomi's viewpoint is meant to be understood as a spiritual revelation intended as a doctrine. Rather, her words are perhaps best understood as the historical record of what she said 
in her bewilderment. This adjustment in viewing her words seems pivotal to a sound understanding. It does not seem consistent with the revelation of the whole of the scripture and its disclosure of the nature of God to presume that the disastrous things in this book were either intended or initiated by God. Mm -hmm. For example, the famine mm -hmm. and the death mm -hmm. of the two sons. Mm -hmm. These were natural calamities that mm -hmm. happened. So it is not like it is God who was judging. It, it, it was most of the times as Christians we tend to take such calamities as God's judgments and not look at it as a natural thing that is happening yeah. that could happen whether you you are right with God or you are not right with God. Yeah. So uh, the Lord had previously warned the, that the land itself would turn against them if they were unfaithful to him. That you can find that in Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy, Nomi 28, uh, in chapter 16 and 24. Further, Elimelech's choice to move his family to the country of Moab is not evidence. Mm -hmm. As being God's direction, mm -hmm. we are not told that God told, told to Elimelech to move. Mm -hmm. Actually, when we go back to reading Ruth chapter 1, we are told there was a certain man mm -hmm. he, he, who, who they, they moved because of famine. So to him, he was trying to protect his family uh, so that he can get provision for his family. But simply his own decision. This is a decision which he made mm. for himself. It was mm. not God instructed, he just made by himself. Mm -hmm. Now that I look at it that way, I think those that he left in Bethlehem, yeah. they didn't die. We are not told that they died. So somehow, God must have made provision. Yeah, that can be confirmed because you remember when Naomi goes back now with Ruth mm -hmm. and they see her mm -hmm. and the women start saying, Oh, that's Naomi. Mm -hmm. And she tells them, mm -hmm. do not call me Naomi. Call, call me, Mara. me Mara because mm. God dealt with me and unfairly or unjustly. Mm. It's like she's now preempting her pains and her bitterness. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So we see that this was a decision that he made. He may not have prayed about it or asked God for his guidance. And probably we may judge that is why this these things happened to them mm -hmm. because maybe they did not involve God in their in their family decisions, probably. Probably. That is what we may think. Mm. So uh, we are saying that it was not uh, uh, the, 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 the direction of God, but simply his own decision. Why suggest, why suggest that the events that follow, that his and his son's death are some things that... Uh, are some of the things that God directed or made provision for. There is more reason to propose that these unfortunate happenings, while not outside God's omniscience, are not direct divine judgment, mm -hmm. but rather the natural results of exposure to circumstances outside the canopy. Mm -hmm. Of the divine promise of God protective canopy. Mm -hmm. Can we get up to there maybe? Yes. Yeah. Today I felt like we needed to look at the aspects of family in our life outcomes. Mm -hmm. Because if you're married or if I'm married, I am engulfed or enclosed mm -hmm. or I am in a closed community of the family. Or even if I'm a community by myself, an individual, mm. I am a community myself, but I have a community of a husband and children. And sometimes women, most, let me say most of the times, mm. women find themselves in situations simply because they have another, they have a community mm. of the nuclear family or mm. whatever other family. Mm. And that 
can go a long way to contribute to some effects or outcomes that may be positive or negative. negative. Like you, you talked about Abigail. Mm. You did not mention her name, mm. but you talked about Abigail. Mm. That story is in First Samuel 25. Yes. And it talks about the, the way um, David sent men mm. to Nabal yes. just because he knew him while he was in the wilderness in war. And he knew these are the workers or the servants of Nabal. Mm. And he knew this was a damn rich man. He had just come from shearing. Mm. That tells you the wool yes. had given him some good money. Mm. And so David is sending his staff, mm -hmm. yani the servants, yes. to go and ask for bread. Yes. And then this man with his arrogance and pride <laughs> mm. spoke like uh, he didn't even recognize. Yes. He did not recognize David. That this, he this said, is oh, mm. who is this man? Mm. He is calling himself who? Mm. There are some servants who run away from their masters mm. and they still want us to recognize them and give them goodies. Mm. That is the kind of talking Nabal did. Yeah. And we see Naomi, not Naomi this time, Abigail, Abigail. found herself in the middle of a big mess because David had planned that he is going to come into the house of Nabal mm. and ensure that no boy child remains. Yes. Do you see no boy child? The repercussions. Repercussion mm. of foolishness mm. that a man portrays mm -hmm. without recognizing mm. who David is. Mm. Now we look at it this way, politely without putting Elimelech on the cross. Mm. When Elimelech decided to move his family mm -hmm. from Bethlehem, Judah, mm. Bethlehem, the house of bread, mm. and Judah, the place of praise, mm. the highly lifted place. Yes. So he brings them down, the Bible says, yes. went down to, to Moab. Moab. So it's like you're coming up from there and you're going down mm. your back, sliding mm -hmm. without knowing it. Mm. Like you say, like squeeze, you know Kenya, we have politics, mm. and you can find a great man of God or woman running down mm. to go and get goodies mm. because in the house of God, mm. the provisions are not coming as mm. we'd expect. Mm. And so we see Elimelech, my God is king. Yes. Abimelech, Elimelech, my God is king. Yes. And so he goes out there. Out of that, out of the canopy, out of the house of bread, yes. out of the high place where God is, and decides to go and live in a place like, mm. remember what Lot did? Yeah. There are so many examples yes. in the Bible. Yes. And where it ended, the wife, yes, yes, yes. she becomes a the pillar. Sort of a pillar of salt. Of, of salt. Mm. So there are so many examples of women mm. in the Bible we can collect mm. and put them and show you that sometimes these things that affect women mm -hmm. are a contribution of the larger community of the household. You know, like the decisions my husband can make sometimes mm -hmm. can have long term effects, mm -hmm. either positive mm -hmm. or negative yeah, but now and even for the children mm -hmm. because Mahalon and Kilion mm -hmm. one of them is like uh, actually uh, one of them is like the and weak uh -huh. weak and sickly weak and sickly and uh, Kilion means uh, failing, failing and, and pining. pining and you say pining is a, a situation where like you mm -hmm. have mental and physical disturbances uh, out of the results of being heartbroken. Or oh, heartbroken. So what, what, what manner of names? So I am thinking, because sometimes names depict current, future, or whatever was there, mm. like the African mm. way of naming. Yes. And I think there's a small relation between the Africans and the Jews, Jews. Yes. named children. Mm. And so these names are supposed to tell us a lot. One, Elimelech, my God is king. Mm. El Melech. Melech is for, for, for king. Pri so El, king, yeah. no, Melech is king. Mm. El or Eli is like God. God. And then we see Naomi is pleasant, pleasant and good, sweet. sweet. Mm. But now look at the man of God 
who has his God and his, his king. king. And then he has a wife who is pleasant. But they have sickly and failing children, children. that tells you future is not forth coming. Mm. So Naomi finds herself having to be drifted from the canopy of God, from where in the house of bread mm. and the place where the praises of our God were lifted. Mm. She is moved by a condition that she may not be in control. Mm. And uh, so many times, as I said earlier, mm. women wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, find themselves being drifted from their purposes. God ordained, being moved from the house of God, being moved from their places of provision. Mm. Like there are places you may marry you and they tell you, you stop working. What do you call that? Being moved from the Bethlehem, mm. being taken to mm. another place mm. for, 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 for supply mm. or for sustenance. Yes. Then there are places where they marry you and be before you know it, they move you from the high place where you used to worship. They tell you, you're married to this family, we so can only is... go to this mm. kind of church. Mm. Do you see this? Mm. Is it coming out very mm. well? And then before you realize, some death creeps into the house mm. and then you start wondering, where do I begin? Mm. What, look, where did I go wrong? Look at the responsibility. Mm. You find yourself in a foreign land, mm -hmm. your husband dies. Mm. You have to look for the proper way to do anything. Yes. Like documentation, mm. like you don't know where to begin. You're in a foreign land. Yes, yes. You don't even know how to go it's back like where you, you came from. You are stripped of your life completely. Completely. Yeah. And I'm sure that left Naomi feeling sickly, mm. feeling devastated, mm. looking at the names of the children. Mm. Where does this man leave her with the two children? True. Do you see? Mm. One is sickly. The other one has issues. Physical mental, and mental. Both because of the devastation mm. and the issues of l maybe having moved from the canopy, from the house of praise, and especially from where they had been used. Mm. And they have come to another land. They are learning new cultures. Mm. Though I see Naomi worked hard. Mm. This I'm saying because when Ruth comes in, she's able to say, allow me not to. Forbid me, for, yeah. forbid me to, to 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 go back mm. to my people mm. because out of you, Naomi, mm. I have seen a God. Mm -hmm. I have understood. Forbid me to go back to my gods. Mm. Forbid me to go back to the worship of idols. Yes, Let yes. me follow here. Mm. So regardless, we see Naomi tried to stand her ground and mm. her faith mm. and tried to raise her sons mm. to the point that they are able to take wives. And I'm sure even when they are taking wives, she is still on her knees praying and asking God, Oh my God, how will this work? Because these children are frail. They are not so strong. And I'm almost thinking, maybe they died without children because they were sickly. They, they were like, not strong. Like, even by the time they were born, they, mm. by the time they were being named, their destiny was already like cut short yeah. because of who they were. Because every time they were called Mahlon, mm -hmm. it's and like you are calling them, you weakling and, and you sickly. sickly. So uh, your their life was already determined. You you pining, yes. you crazy you boy, mental person, who, you mental you who can't stay at home. You are loitering all over. Exactly. We have to get you a wife and try to make sure you are kept home. Exactly. So, and you only need to repeat something over and over and and it becomes. Yeah. You know, you speak words in the atmosphere and you change the atmosphere to that which that you are speaking. And therefore, I feel like. Their life, even the, it's like they the one. It was already predetermined that these people are not going to continue this lineage because yeah. already, uh, it was already settled. Well, it was like written on stone, yes. cast on stone. Yes. And um, I am just thinking about sometimes mm. how we name our children, mm. how we call them. Mm. Sometimes we tell them you're as foolish as your father. Okay, sometimes you tell them you're as foolish as your mother. 
Sometimes we say, oh, this one is named after my father. He's just like my father, you know? And then before you realize it, character, character is forming. And it, it starts habits mm. that you're trying to fight as a mother or as a father or as parents. And you realize this is like building the tower of, I don't know where, not Babel, because Babel came down. Mm. It's like you're building a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Mm. And so this is coming so, so, so strongly on my side mm. that even as we negotiate mm -hmm. the naming of our children mm -hmm. and the, the kind of places we choose to go and live mm -hmm. in, yeah, because some of us just go to places mm -hmm. without asking ourselves, what will be the effect if I move my family to Karatina, mm -hmm. if I move them to Mugoiri, mm -hmm. if I move them to Sabasaba, mm -hmm. if I move them to Sagana, mm -hmm. or if I move them to Mombasa, mm -hmm. what shall be the end result? Mm -hmm. What is What was our God-ordained purpose in this? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thinking in the interest of time, mm -hmm. we shall be building on this case mm -hmm. more and more, more and more, more and more, mm -hmm. because this is like the progressive revelation, mm. something nobody has ever looked at. Yes. Like we say, oh, we are failing, and you know, mm. but we are not looking at mm. why did 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 Naomi find herself mm. in, in such a situation in in, in Moab mm. and having to struggle with so many deaths mm. and having to lose so much mm. until when she's going back mm. to the place of praise and bread mm. she's still complaining and whining mm. and looking like the, if we were to draw her picture mm. like skinny mm. old great looking like bony, like she needs a walking stick, mm. you know, kind of bedding. Mm. Yeah, because of the troubles she found herself in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, just to, as we wind up in this, this episode, uh, I know we, we, we continue on to the next one in this topic, but I, 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 I find myself asking then, what is the position that the woman should understand that they're supposed to take in a family setup when they are faced with a situation where they can foresee some of these decisions which are being made or some of the direction which is being taken. Because uh, I believe a woman has such a strong intuition to see far than our men do. And sometimes we see we see our men getting into business deals. We see our men getting into, into relationships that in future you can see clearly this is not going to end well. And sometimes when you voice those, those thoughts, they are met with uh, a bang, a bang like mm. uh, what do you know? Mm -hmm. Or uh, you are not in relationship with these people. And mm -hmm. therefore, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is the position that a woman who understands who she is in God, and who understands the value of protecting and keeping a family. What is the position that this woman should take? Intercession, intercede, pray. Look and bringing in Abigail. Mm -hmm. You know how she went mm -hmm. with bread, with the things that David asked for. Mm -hmm. Then she went and bowed mm -hmm. and knelt mm -hmm. and bowed before the king, mm. bowed down at his feet mm. and worshipped him, mm. considering we are looking at David as the lion, the of, lion. No, the lion mm. Mm. or the of, of the tribe of Judah mm. and, and um, a prototype of Jesus Christ. Mm. So we men must take the position of interceding, mm. intercession, mm. calling on the name of, invoking God. Mm -hmm. on this base on in on uh, on behalf on behalf of family mm -hmm. not just sitting there and saying wow if you can't change him invoke the name of god mm -hmm. pray mm -hmm. and ask god for 
intervention. Mm. That's what I would say at this point. Wow. Mm. Thank you so much, Pastor Miriam, for this. Mm. We look forward to continue with this conversation yeah. in our next episode. We just want to equip the woman with the knowledge of God mm. and the Word of God to help us also uh, have healthy relationships, have, uh, have, uh, have godly homes and godly families that are moving into the, di into the right direction as mm. we protect one another in mm -hmm. the family, as we protect our men, our husbands, our authority, because we have been called to submit to authority and therefore we are not saying fight with... That's not what we are saying. We are saying as you submit, be wise mm. and invoke the wisdom of God and the word of God to win or to make wins for our families. Yes. So thank you very much for tuning in. Till next time, we continue with this topic. So don't miss out. Ensure that you have called your friends so that you can all come in to watch this program and learn some very beautiful things. God bless you. Till next time. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you.